hello everyone and welcome to another video on angular shopping cart so here what we are trying to do is add a couple of more features to our shopping cart project one of which would be api integration and the other would be the add to favorite functionality i would like to thank one of my viewers kanchan gaikwad who suggested that these two features should be added to the shopping cart and this is the whole point of this video series you suggest features and i would implement those features inside our project so before getting into the coding, we'll like to check out what features have we implemented up till now. Let me just open up our project folder. And let me start it up in my terminal, ng-serve, and also open this in my editor. That is VS Code. All right, and let's see the compilation part. Okay, compiled successfully. Let's open this up in our browser. And here we are to what we have implemented. The functionality that we have is uh, the product listing is done through services and add to cart is done where you know you can continuously keep on adding products to cart. The problem here is that if I refresh my browser, the cart becomes empty. That is basically the problem of persistence. And the reason is that we have not gone for any storage kind of a mechanism where we can store the items of the cart at some data source which we can access later. And that's why when we refresh the browser, because it is just a variable that is inside your browser, the cart becomes empty again. So what we would like to do is we'd like to go for API integration so that when we do the add to cart, a cart item is added to the cart API or a cart web service, you may say. And then when we refresh our browser or open our browser anywhere else, the cart is not empty, but it contains all the items that you have added previously. So basically that is the whole idea of uh, this particular video. Now, if we want to go for API integration for cart, it is always a good idea to go for API integration for products as well. So this would be the steps that we'd be following. First, we'd be going for API integration on the product side, and then we'd go for the cart API integration. The whole point here is to get a data source available to us, which could be in the form of anything like a local storage, a session storage, or even an API that is hosted on a server. The API or a web service could be any type of a backend API, like uh, it could be programmed in Node.js, it could be PHP, Java, um, ASP.NET, uh, it could be Firebase as your background service running and all. So uh, there could be so many possibilities, but backend is not what we are going to uh, focus on in this particular project. And hence, we'd be going for a very, very, very basic API server, which is something called JSON server library. And this would give me a backend service to work with, backend web service to work with. Let me just open up JSON server reference and you'd be able to see what it is essentially. It's a fake API, a fake REST API's uh, library with zero coding, all right? Literally it, um, spins up an API in 30 seconds, less than 30 seconds actually. So we'd be using this. And um, one thing that I would like you to know is we should never use JSON server in a production environment or even in a development environment. It's just for learning purposes. What we are aiming here is like once this whole thing works, we would like to replace JSON server with one of the backend programming languages uh, like JavaScript or maybe PHP um, and so on and so forth. So, so let's just use JSON server for our APIs this time and then let's make our shopping cart functional. So I'm going to spin up an API server using JSON server library. And for that, I'll have to open another command prompt. So let me just minimize this browser, minimize everything. Uh, let's just keep the project running and I'll just open one more command prompt and I'll just do this npm install global json server. Now I already have json server installed so I don't think that um, it will do much of a change in my installation. Packages will be very minimal uh, that would be downloaded and installed. While in your case it could be like if you would not have installed json server earlier it could be something that could have multiple more more packages than mine that would be installed so let's wait for this to get installed all right 
So now once JSON server is installed, it is really easy to spin up a server. So let me go into project folder and open up this in my command line. And let's go for uh, JSON server db.json. You can see that there's no db.json available and it is creating a db.json for you with some default data. So let's check out the db.json that is created. You can see that there is posts, comments and profile in our dummy db.json file. Now this can be really accessed really easily from your server. You can see that the resources that are available are localhost 3000, posts, comments, profiles. All of these are REST API, RESTful resources. So basically you can go for any method like get, put, post, delete, patch, any of the methods that you would be going for. So let me just check one of them. Like I'll go for localhost 3000, posts. This is a GET request that has been fired to our API server and hence it is returning us the data. If you go for a POST request with some data, some data would be added in here. So that's basically what REST APIs would do. So what we would like to do is, we'd like to add some data to start with and I'd go for some product data. So let's go for products, products and products of course would be an array. And we would like to go for multiple products. Now this is a JSON file, so there's no new product sort of a mechanism that we did earlier. Let me just close everything down because this is not related to our project. This is something which is not um, part of the project at all. So we'd like to go for something like uh, products, which would have an ID and ID, we can start with one uh, name. And uh, let's say, uh, let's go for some actual product names. And I would like to go for toys for kids. All right. And I'll just go with the images. And I, what I would like to go for is uh, square images to start with. What you would expect is that uh, the images uh, would be um, uh, thumbnails that are provided, uh, you know, as squares from the server. Uh, but right now we don't we don't have a server that is capable of doing that sort of a thing. So we would just like to go for uh, size uh, icon. Nope. I'll just search in square images. I think, yeah. Um, Google is capable of doing that for us. So let's go with our favorite Rubik's cube to start with. And I'll just copy the image address, copy link address and put it in here. And what what is the name of this image? I'll just name it Rubik's cube. Description. I'll come to that in a while. Uh, image URL Oh, it's a Google image Image URL and uh, price Let's say 299 maybe. And uh, what else? Name, description, image URL, price. I believe that was it. Let's just check with our product uh, model. ID, name, description, price, image URL. Yep. All right. So that, and then we'll just replicate this. Let me close this down. I'll generate some lorem ipsum.
we'll have different prices and different names of the product and different images and we'd have different images so this time around we'll make we'll make uh, or we'll select images that'll make more sense so maybe this one i don't know why i always keep coming back to the rubik's cube i don't know anyways So here we are we have different products and different prizes and different titles and so on and so forth uh, let me restart our server the json server and you can see that there is a new resource available that is products and if i go with localhost 3000 products you see that we have a we have a product available now if you try this on your computers you might see a different output than mine i do have a json reader sort of an extension installed in google chrome so that is the thing but the point is that you're getting all the data and this is the data that we would like to have in our products that are listed that is our first thing that we would like to do and um, there is another resource that i want to go for which is cart so let's just say cart and that will be an empty array to start with so again restarting our server would give us cart as a resource as well and if i go with cart you'd see that you'd get a blank array to start with so cart is not a good name actually it should be a plural or maybe we can have a cart that's fine we'll, we'll just have it all right so we have this and uh, and now both of the both of the resources are working like products is working and cart is an empty array to start with now our server is ready and now we'd like to go for getting the shopping cart integrated with our api that we have just created so before going into the coding portion let's just list down whatever the things that we would be requiring uh, to get this whole uh, api integration done let me just open up our document and earlier we had a list of things that we did in our video let's just copy this or cut this paste it in a different page uh, so that we'll have a list to start with so let me just paste that here we definitely need services and dependency injection and uh, observable but inside observable we would like to go for or uh, maybe we can just do it this way like rxjs and rxjs has subject and observable so this would also have a couple of more methods like definitely the subscribe method is one thing that we would like to go for Then there is something called map also a method called pipe now let's see where this whole thing comes up or where these methods are helpful to us um, but even before that we would also like to go for one more thing which is called http client module this http client module would help us to get the api integration done uh, in the http client module we'd like to use a utility called HTTP client. Now, HTTP client, it is a mechanism that will help us to get uh, some sorts of APIs um, integrated. So, in which there are certain methods like get, post, put, delete, patch. These are all REST API methods, which also tells us that Angular is really, really focusing on getting the REST API protocol created. 
So these are the things that we'd be utilizing to get the whole API integration portion done, products and cart included. Also, diagrammatically, if we speak of things, as far as API integration is concerned, it'll go something like this. Uh, we have a very big division now, of which is one is the front end and one is the back end. Uh, back end would have an API running. And we'll just keep it to it, like this is just a web API. Or a web service, you may say. I mean, call it by a couple of our service. Basically, this is our server. And um, the product service would be getting and putting the data into the web API that we have for products. All right. So this is is basically what it is um, this arrow should go both the directions uh, so the product service would be requesting data and product service would be getting the data as well so this would happen right so so that is that's is basically what it is and uh, similarly there'll be a cart service later that will be added and the cart service would also you know utilize this web api that we have created so this is the thing that we would like to go for this is the diagrammatic representation of, of what we are doing and uh, this is this is the features that we are going to implement let's go for this now to start with we'd go for the http client module and the http client library and this time around we'd be only using the get method because what we want to do to start with the first step is to get the list of products to our product list component so let's go into the code and before even going into the service let's go into the module because if i want to use the http client module i'll have to register it in the imports array any third party module that you want to use be it a form module or a reactive forms module a browser module is already registered and then there is this http client module that we'll be using you'd have to register it before using it so let's do this first step and i'll go for import HTTP client module from angular common HTTP now there was one HTTP module available before this HTTP client module but after angular 4.2 versions um, HTTP client module is more prevalent and uh, it is better than the traditional HTTP module so we'd be using the HTTP client module itself no HTTP module necessary so HTTP client module registered and now we'd be able to use it anywhere we want to so as per the diagram it is the product service that has to call the api and the service would then give the data to the products that's what we'd be doing we'd be using the product service to call the api so the the place where we want to code in is the product.service.ts uh, later on you would see that this would not be necessary anymore and we'd be getting rid of this particular product array all right so now i'd like to go for api and uh, to start with we'll just go for a constant variable here which is called an api url and later we'd like to store it into some config file but as of now we'll just go with something like this const api url is equal to and we would like to get this products url in here remember there could be so many places better places where we can store this variable and then import it inside this file but as of now because we just want to get the products api working we are going for the variable api url in product service itself however we would definitely want to move it somewhere else all right so let's just get the HTTP client module uh, imported now this HTTP client it is an injectable so which means that what I can do is I can import HTTP client from angular common HTTP and in the constructor I can do a dependency injection. 
and here instead of returning products what i'll do is this dot http dot get api url as simple as that now here it poses a couple of problems um, i'll just remove this comment but here you can see that right away it is giving us an error uh, the problem is that what we have specified here as get products return type is a products array now while we need definitely need a products array from the get products function but this dot http dot get this method would not return us a product array what it would return us is an observable all right so which means we would have to do something like this we have to specify a proper return type so let's do this import observable from rxjs and instead of product or instead of product array we'll just go with observable now this seems to be a better statement but now you can see that this is giving us an error over here in observable so whenever you go for an observable as a data type wherever you specify it whether it be a return type or a data type of a variable you should always specify uh, the outcome of this observable like what are you expecting this observable to be eventually so what we are expecting this observable to be eventually or the data type of this observable is product array all right so this seems to be a proper return type our get products is going to return us an observable but then again that observable would eventually become a product array now when we give this data type you can see that again we get this uh, red line under this return statement the reason is that when you specify a data type for an observable inside your return type you'd have to also specify that same data type over here the expectation has to be set like product array this would not give us any further problems now so you can see here that if we specify data types you'd have to specify data types everywhere however if we do not specify data types at all then this get method here we don't have to specify anything at all but that's not a good practice so we would like to go for data type specification at any point in time so now once we are getting the data from the api url this product doesn't need to be here at all so i'll just delete this and our product service would indeed get us the data from the api url now this being done there is one more place where we'd have to modify certain things so you can see that this is an observable that is getting us um, the products array and inside the components in our shopping cart product list component you can see that here you now start getting errors because the product list is a product array as far as the data type is concerned while what we are trying to do is we are trying to assign an observable to the product list over here that is also a problem uh, here this product service that get products is returning us an observable that will be a product list while we are uh, trying to assign that to a product list which is not a proper way to do it which is not correct so we would not do that instead because this is an observable now we'd be able to do something like subscribe an observable can be subscribed and inside the subscription we'd have a method which will give us products and this products can be now assigned to the product list so basically this dot product list is equal to products now when we do this we would be able to get the products listed let's see what we get as an output and there it is we do get our output but you can see that the uh, the text is uh, really big and that was expected actually so we would like to limit the number of text and um, you know and then view details would have the whole description it itself but the good thing is we are getting the products from the api so let's just limit the number of characters that are shown in here and to, to do that there is a pipe available in angular and i would list that down in here as well i'll call this topic built-in pipes and one of the pipes is slice 
so slicing the string into some portion so what we would do is we would like to go into our code and uh, the place where uh, this string is displayed and that is the product item component so let's go into the product item and in the description let's just go for slice zero to let's say 50 let's see how that looks I, I want the start and end to be 0 and 50 respectively and I'm slicing that string into 0 and 50 and let's see how that looks here hmm this looks this looks quite okay uh, I would however like to add some more characters to it like 80 and then I'll just go for like some dot 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 so it'll just mean that there are certain things available more inside this particular product like read more sort of a thing All right so so this is what it is we are getting the data from the um, from the API we are able to show that inside our um, inside our list of products and now the next step would be to add this to the cart now this has been added to the cart remember this is everything is working like the total and all the only problem is that if I refresh everything would be again reset so we don't want that we want the data to be persistent so this video ends here and in the next video we would like to go for the api integrated to the cart now there is some thinking to be done inside the uh, cart integration so until the next video comes i would allow you to get uh, that particular aspect thought of maybe implemented and suggest me in the comments what you did and uh, if if you are not able to do it that's fine we'll wait for the next video and we'll see how that can be done till then bye, -bye.